We're getting the studio all set up. Things are moving forward. The dyno jet's right here. It's going to land in its home soon. And in the masterful essence of bad timing, Creality reached out to me and asked if I'd like to review their new Falcon A1 laser cutter engraver. I've been wanting one of these things for a long time, so timing not great, but hey, I'm not going to turn it down. And I wanted to check it out, particularly because I don't like Adobe Illustrator. In fact, I don't like Adobe at all, especially since they went to their, their rent-a-software model. In fact, I used to use Adobe going back to the 90s even for my professional work. And once they went to the rent-a-software model, I ditched them, and now I use other solutions. So the one thing I find myself doing a lot is making gaskets. I can't seem to leave well enough alone. The intake manifold in the LTD has been ported. I cut over 11 pounds of aluminum out of it. The factory gaskets don't fit anymore. And just the ability to make gaskets as you need them really appeals to me. But what doesn't appeal to me is the setup time and how difficult these things tend to be. So we're gonna see just how easy we can make that workflow to duplicate a gasket. Let's go take this thing out of the box and give it a shot. All right, so we've unboxed and set up, and I'm not gonna lie, the software is a little bit hard to find. You actually have to go not to Creality's website, but to CraftSeek is where I found it. But once the software is up, it tells you to do the equipment testing. So it says, to ensure your machine works properly, we provide a ready-made pattern. Please follow the instructions below. Place the materials. Materials. Why is my laser all the way down? Got some setup work to do on. Well, that's what this is supposed to be doing. I did carefully move this back so I could take the foam out. Hey. Don't yell at me. Place the materials. The materials have been placed. Please use the highest level multi-stage focus bar to focus. So they walk you through all this stuff. It's, it's fairly self-explanatory. Let's see, Let's open the lid. We will adjust the height. Okay, that much is done. Frame, Let's see what she does. All right, now you're supposed to hit start. We're gonna hit start. All right, here comes the magic. It's burning an F. I wonder what letter is next. I'm going with A. I'm going with you. <laughs> All right, start exploring. So that apparently is all that is required. All right, so it does say that my camera's calibrated, but I wanna calibrate it anyway. So, cause it's kind of fun. We're gonna stick this. You can see it, I guess, up in the corner. And we hit get image. Okay, and we slide over. I'm probably gonna make the calibration worse than what it already was. Give it a shot. Get That's image. Right. And then over here, get image, get image. Get image, get image, get image, 
Why is this, why is it red? Oh, probably because it doesn't like this being open, maybe? Okay. I don't know what these numbers mean. Every time I hit a get image, it assigns a number. Hey, that one's 69. Oh, Simon. Hi, Simon. Do you want an engraving? Yeah? Is that a yes? Is that a yes? Get image. He's just going to chill there, I think. Okay, so uh, let's take this thing out. All right, so now that I've set the thing up and I watch YouTube videos just like you would, there's tons of them. There's other creators. Creality's got their own. You know, it's all set up. It's all ready to go. Let's see how hard it is to actually make a gasket. So the gasket we're going to make is a Ford fuel pump timing cover gasket. And why? Because I have a bunch of these kicking around because I don't use them. So step one is basically put this thing on your scanner, scan it. My scanner only has options for TIFF or PDF. I'm going to scan as TIFF. I'll take the TIFF, I'll open it in Microsoft Paint, which of course, if you have Windows, you have Microsoft Paint. And the only purpose for this is to crop it down to size and to save it as a JPEG so you could bring it on over. That's it, don't worry about anything else. Okay, now that our gasket's been scanned and I've put it on this computer as a JPEG, this is how easy it is. All right. Let's switch over to the computer. Let's fire up Falcon Design Space. Switch over to Canvas. I have not found a way to import images directly into the Canvas. So the best way to do it in that case is just to not make it full screen. Take your JPEG and throw it on the Canvas and it's done. And now you have this. Now there's a couple of spots in this software where there is a trace image function, right? So the one you want to use is this one. So click on this so you can see all the schmutz that was on my scanner and all that. So you just set these settings, right? So just raise the threshold to something fairly high. You'll see sort of a very fine, faint red line around stuff. Noise ignore, it's a gasket, crank it all the way up. Smoothness, it's a gasket, you can crank it all the way up. I don't know what opt tolerances, opto tolerance. I, I don't know what this does. Um, I don't know. It doesn't matter. And then you just hit confirm and it looks like nothing's happened. And I'm not going to lie. I actually got stuck on this. I've already made one gasket and, you know, just so I wouldn't look like a complete fool doing this. But this is one of the places where I got stuck and you know where it is? It's behind. So you have to move that thing out of the way to be able to see it. I wish they would make that more clear. But we're going to delete the original images. And now we have the outline of the gasket. And it's green. So you go to these layers here. Select a layer that is not green because you don't need all these other layers. Hit the trash can. Same with this. Hit the trash can. Okay. And I'm just going to use it as line cutting. Switch over to line cutting. I'm just going to use the, the basswood board settings. That seems to work. So once the software setup is done, I didn't get the honeycomb plate so you don't carve up your the base plate that's in the machine. So I'm just using a piece of sheet aluminum that I had kicking around. Here's the gasket material. It's sort of like, you know, this cardboard rubbery type stuff. Um, it's actually really kind of a pain in the butt to cut with an X-Acto knife. I'm going to tape it down with some... Good old gaffer's tape, because I always have gaffer's tape. You probably don't even really need to do this, but I'm going to do it. You know, gasket material usually comes in a roll, so it rarely sits perfectly flat. And of course, we have a little gaffer's tape string here. Let's get rid of that. All right, so there you go. That's all you got to do. Take this thing, set it down in the lazing machine. Close it up. All right, back to our computer here. So you want to hit this frame button to see where it's going to burn. And this is another thing that threw me for a loop for a while. So I kept hitting frame and 
It's just like framing the corner. That's nowhere close to where I want it to be. And that's because you need to go from current position here in the start position to absolute coordinates, and then it will find your gasket. Hit frame. Now it goes and locates it. And you can tell we're a bit off. And you can open the machine, but it's much easier just to move the gasket down and over. Let's try that. Let's hit frame. Try it again. Oh, it's still up too high, but left to right is pretty good. So we're gonna adjust it one, hopefully final time. Hit frame. Did I go too far? No, that looks like that's gonna work. And then you just hit start and kick back and enjoy the lazing. This is actually happening in real time. And you probably can't quite make it out on camera, but there is sort of this, this white stuff that's accumulating by where it's cutting. And that is actually aluminum oxide. Uh, same thing happens when you're TIG welding uh, aluminum, obviously. You'll see this, this white sort of frosty area. And that's coming obviously from the aluminum backing plate. Watching a laser cutter Cut a Ford gasket in real time Watching a laser cutter Burn out my eyes Just kidding Watching a laser cutter Burning its way to my heart Watching a laser cutter Cutting me a new part Watching a laser cutter Cut a Ford gasket in real time Watching a laser cutter Burn out my eye Just kidding Cutty, cutty, cutty Cut, cut Cutty, cutty, cutty Burn, burn Cutty, cutty, cutty Cut, cut Cutty, cutty, cutty Woo! That's it. Your gasket is now complete. The aluminum is not even warm. We take off our gaffer's tape. Look at that perfect outline. Punch out the holes. And there's some carbonized gasket material around the edges, which just literally comes off. And I'll just kind of work it over with my hands here a little bit. And there you have it. An absolutely picture perfect recreation of the original. It's even the same size. They match up 100% right there. And it's really like that simple. I'm kind of blown away. Like I said, once I figured out those two issues in the software, then you can do this in like five minutes. It's insane how quick this is. But even the edges don't look burned. They're nice and smooth. I mean, if I got this in the store, I would be like, okay, yeah, this is, this is the real deal. I have some carbon on my fingers. But just ignore that. So it's that easy, really. It's ridiculous. And the other thing is, you know, the size, I, I don't remember what the exact size that this thing can cut is, but I can tell you it's big enough to do the LTD's intake manifold gasket between the upper and the lower intakes. It's not big enough to do the intake manifold to head interface gasket, but you could do that in two pieces. And that's actually really nice because I tend to buy different thicknesses of intake manif manifold gaskets, which means I have to custom order them because as you, because of the geometry that's involved, it raises the height of the intake manifold up and down. And that's how you can get a perfect port alignment. Don't have to do that anymore. I can do this. And to make a gasket that's bigger than what this thing can cut, 
particularly in the intake manifold to head interface, you know, you just like cut a puzzle piece out in it. So it's two pieces that interface with each other and between the bolt locations and that puzzle piece section, it'd be fine. Like right now, I think I'm using a, an eighth inch or maybe even a little bit thicker gasket. But that notwithstanding, let's talk about the value proposition here. So we didn't have to buy or pay for any software. We used Falcon Design Space, which is Creality's, I mean, this is a Falcon A1, right? Uh, so no cost involved there. We use Microsoft Paint, which if you have a computer, which you're gonna have to have, you have Paint. I'm sure there's a similar solution in Apple world. But no Adobe Illustrator, no Lightburn Illustrator. I don't even know what Adobe charges now, but I'm pretty sure for just the bare minimum, you're still going to be paying like 120 bucks a year at least to use it, which is one of the reasons why I absolutely despise Adobe. Lightburn is between 100 and like $200. I just did a quick cursory check online. You don't need any of that. And if you can draw the gasket, you can cut it out. That's the really great thing about it. If you need to actually make a gasket from scratch, you can just do it with a friggin' pencil and a ruler and a French curve and just do it the same way. Just do it to size and scan it and bring it over here and burn it. But at the time that I'm shooting this video, I think they're talking about selling this thing for about 550 bucks. But again, no licenses, no consumables really, except for whatever you're gonna be cutting and working with. And you kind of have to think to yourself, like if you're a typical car person, car guy, uh, in most cases, there are some car gals out there, but most of them are car guys. You're going to spend probably maybe, you know, between 50 and 200 bucks on miscellaneous gaskets. And here's another great thing. This thing will actually cut, obviously, wood. It will cut acrylic. It will do all the other fun stuff that laser cutters and engravers can do. So you could actually theoretically make your own carb spacer and then the gaskets for the spacer. Because, you know, I, I don't know how many old guys are out there watching this thing, but we used to make carb spacers out of wood because it's got great thermal properties. So, you know, decide for yourself if this is something that's gonna work for you. But I think now that they have the user aspect of it, the usability aspect of it licked, this is kind of a game changer. You know, I do have two 3D printers and a small CNC router, but I almost never use them because their usability is frankly kind of difficult and tricky. But now we're getting to the point where not only you can have a laser cutter engraver that just works out of the box and is easy to use, but you know, I understand that there's a whole bunch of 3D printers that do the same thing. So maybe I'll be looking at those next, but really next up is setting up the dyno, going to go get the car lift, which is already sitting at the depot and you know get this place rolling but you know this is uh this came up just at this time so here we are oh and by the way here's your moment of roger i'm so proud of roger this is the first shoot he's directed he's down there in the dark rogering away roger how was that was that good roger did i do a good job Roger, over here. Did I do well? You can't see me. Did I do well? Yeah? You're gonna get an Academy Award for this one. Good job, Roger. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy?